Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Now I am going to start the problems on capital gain. Last three videos I have explained you about how to compute the income from capital gain. So before that you must know what do you mean by capital asset? What is the nature of capital asset whether it is long term capital asset or short term capital asset? What is transfer of capital asset? All these things I have already explained in the last three videos. So if you want the perfect knowledge, perfect command on the topic of capital gain, you have to watch the theory. Without understanding the theory, you cannot understand the problems. So if you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject income tax for the assessment year 22-23. Select the videos of capital gain. Be perfect on the provisions. Then you come to the problem. So before starting the problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot of the answer of the first four problems, then I'll explain. Now. <clears throat> See the first problem. Sri Sai Chand purchased gold ornaments for rupees 2 lakh 5000 in the financial year 2001 2002. During the previous year, he sold the ornaments for 10 lakh rupees. First of all, the year of purchase 2001 2002. Now, year of sale is 21 22. It's a long term capital asset. More than three years. So, more than three years. So, it is a long-term capital asset and the gain arising will be long-term capital gain. So transfer expenses are 45,000. The cost inflation index in the year of purchase was 100 and in the year of sale, that means current to previous year, it is 317. Compute the income from capital gain. The very first problem is very, very simple. So how to start the problem? First, you write on say Saichan computation of LTCG long term capital gain because the SSC hold the asset for more than three years. After purchasing for more than three years, he is selling the asset. So it's a long term. So long term capital gain for the assessment year 22 23. Consideration received. He sold the gold ornaments for rupees 10 lakh. That is consideration received. From that, deduct the transfer expenses, selling expenses. 45,000. We get the net consideration 9,55,000. From that, we deduct indexed cost of acquisition. In the last video, I have explained for computing long term capital gain, we have to calculate indexed cost of acquisition. So, how to calculate actual cost into index of previous year divided by index of purchase year? So, here it is given the actual cost of the gold ornaments was 2,5,000. The previous year, the index number of the previous year, 21-22, is 317. Divided by index number of the purchase year, in the problem it is given, the index at the time of purchasing the gold was 100. So 317 by 100, it comes to 649,850. Deduct, we'll get LTCG. Long term capital gain, 3,5150. Finished. In working note, you should write, the SSC has uh, so has purchased the asset more than three years back more than three years back so gain arising is a long term capital gain that's it now i'm coming to the second problem mr y n charan sold his residential house for 30 lakh 50 thousand on 10th august 2021 during the previous year 21 22 so during our current previous year 2022 he has sold he has sold his residential house for 30,50,000. Cost inflation index 317. We already know the current previous year index is 317, which is purchased fifth on 5th November 1988 for 1,2,000. Fair market value on 1 for 2001 was 8 lakh, and the stamp duty value was 9 lakh. If the selling expenses are 53,000, Compute the income from capital gain and tax liability if income from other head is nil. So here in this problem, some more new points are given. Fair market value is given, stamp duty value is also given. So how to treat that, I'll explain. So here, why and channel? 
I'm not writing the heading, but in examination, you should write down computation of in long term capital gain of Sri Y and Charan for the assessment year 22 23. After writing the complete ring, you start the table. Consideration received 30 lakh 50 thousand given in the plot. The house was sold for 30 lakh 50 thousand. Selling expenses, transfer expenses 53 thousand. Deduct net consideration 29 lakh 97 thousand. From this, we deduct the indexed cost of acquisition. First point, according to the provisions of Income Tax Act, if an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSE can choose higher of the following two, actual cost or fair market value on 1-4-2001. Whenever you are watching the video, always keep a notebook, calculator, pen beside you and immediately write on the provisions. Otherwise, you'll forget it. Throughout the income tax subject, I'm repeating this sentence. Then only you can be able to remember. Otherwise, simply watching, listening the lecture, you'll forget it. So if an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, SSC can choose higher of the following two. Actual cost of the asset or fair market value on 1-4-2001. In our problem, the actual cost of the asset was, uh, at what price he has purchased? Uh, 1,2,000. He has purchased for 1 lakh 2000, but the fair market value on 1 for 2001 is 8 lakh rupees. So he can choose 1 lakh 2000 or 8 lakh, whichever is higher, right? But one more condition is given the stamp duty value is also given. So income tax act says the fair market value should not exceed the stamp duty. If the fair market value is exceeding the stamp duty value, then take the stamp duty value. If the fair market value is less than the stamp duty value, take the fair market value. In our problem, the stamp duty value is 9 lakh, whereas fair market value is 8 lakh. So fair market value is less. So we can take the FMB. So here you can see in case of land or building or both, if stamp duty value is available, then FMB shall not exceed the stamp duty value. The fair market value should not be more than stamp duty value. But in our case, FMB is less. So in this case, stamp duty value 9 lakh, FMB 8 lakh. The cost of acquisition is higher of the following two. Because whenever an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSC can choose higher of the following two, actual cost or FMB. So actual cost 1 lakh 2000, FMB is 8 lakh. Whichever is higher, that will be taken. So indexed cost of acquisition is 8 lakh into 2317, our current previous year index. The index number for 2021-22, which is notified by the central government. It is. It will be given in the problem. If it is not given, remember that for our current previous year, the index number is 317 divided by index number on 1-4-2001. Because the asset was purchased before 1-4-2001, so index, index number of 2001-2002 will be taken. Hundred. So 25 lakh 36,000. 25 lakh 36,000 is the index cost of acquisition. Direct index cost of acquisition will get long term capital gain that is 4,61,000. So in this problem, the point you have to remember is regarding the stamp duty and fair market value. That's it. Then computation, it is also asking you to calculate the tax liability if income under other heads is nil. It is given no income from other heads. He is having only one income LTCG and LTCG is taxed at a flat rate of 20%. Long term capital gain 4,60,000. But basic exemption will be given. The basic exemption is 2,50,000. Deduct 2,50,000. 2,11,000 is the taxable LTCG. On this 2,11,000, tax will be applied at the rate of 20%. So 20% of 2,11,000, 40 to 200. To this, we have to add the mandatory health and education cess at the rate of 4%. So 4% of 40 to 200, 1688. So ultimately, 43,888 is the tax liability. Is the tax liability. From that, uh, rounded off to 43,890. 
so 43,890 is the tax liability <coughs> now problem number 3 <coughs> third problem Srimati Ganga Bhavani purchased a residential house for rupees 5 lakh in 1997-98 so again before 1-4-2001 she has purchased the house for 5 lakh during 2003-2004 she constructed two more rooms at a cost of 2 lakh 18,000 on 15th May 2021 she entered into an, a contract <coughs> with Dr. Hari to sell the house for 22 lakh 30,000 and received 75,000 as advance later on Hari decided not to purchase the house and the advance received were forfeited on 12th December 2021 she sold the house for 24 lakh selling expenses 2 percent calculate the income from capital gain and tax liability if income from other heads are 6 lakh 30 thousand the cost inflation index for 2003-2004 is 109 and 21-22 it is 317 in this problem the new point is advance received and then later on forfeited and cost of improvement <coughs> After purchasing the residential house, the SSC has constructed some more rooms by incurring capital expenditure. So, uh, here we have cost of acquisition and cost of improvement. Right? Now, see here. And one more thing you remember. If advance money is received from the buyer and later on, because the transaction was not completed, the advance money is forfeited. Now, remember. If the advance money is forfeited after 1-4-2014, 1st April 2014, after this 1st April 2014, if the advance is received and forfeited, it will be treated as income from other sources. It is not taxable under capital gain. So here in our problem, the advance forfeited is after 1-4-2014, uh, so it is taxable. That 75,000 rupees advance forfeited is taxable under income from other sources. That point you remember. Now here, Srimati Ganga Bhavani. Consideration received 24 lakh. So during the current previous year, she sold the house for 24 lakh consideration. From that, 2% is the selling expenses given in the problem. So 2% of 24 lakh, 48,000 deduct. 2352, that is the net consideration. Now we have to deduct indexed cost of acquisition. At what price she has purchased the house? First line it is given. She has purchased the house for 5 lakh rupees in 1997-98 financial year. When an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSC can choose either the actual cost or FMV. But in our problem, fair market value is not given. FMV is not given. So we take the actual cost. The actual cost of the building 5 lakh into Current the previous year index 317 divided by index number of the year of purchase. Any asset purchased before 1-4-2001, the index number should be taken as 100. Already in the previous problem I told you. So here the asset was purchased in 97-98 before 1-4-2001. So we take the index number 100. So 5 lakh into 317 by 100, 1585. Now improvement after purchasing the house some improvements were made so during the year 2003-2004 she constructed two rooms at a cost of 2,18,000 the cost of improvement is 2,18,000 current previous year index is 317 and index number of 2002-2003 given in the problem 109 so multiply 2,18,000 into 317 by 109 6,34,000 this is the index cost of improvement now add up both you get 22 lakh 19,000 deduct. We'll get 1 lakh 33,000 as the long term capital gain. Now it is asking you to calculate the tax liability also. So here, advance received is forfeited after 1 for 2014. Hence, it shall be treated as income from other sources. So remember, in examination, you must write all these things in working notes. I am writing minimum of the working notes because time and the space is limited. But in examination, you must write all the working notes. So, now normal income. The normal income, income under other heads, 6,30,000 is given in the problem. Income under other heads. Apart from that, advance money forfeited 
75,000 that is also taxable under income from other sources. So 75,000 at 7 lakh 5,000 is the normal income. On this normal income, slab system will apply. The slab rates will apply. So slab income rate tax. First slab up to 2 lakh 50,000 income 2 lakh 50,000 nil no tax. Second slab goes from 2 lakh 50,000 one to 5 lakh rupees. So second last slab 2 lakh 50,000 one to 5 lakh income is 2 lakh 50,000. Five percent is the rate of tax. So two lakh fifty thousand into five percent, twelve thousand five. Now next slab goes from five lakh one rupee to ten lakhs. But is our income going up to ten lakh rupees? No, our income is only seven lakh five thousand. So third slab we are not going to take up to ten lakh. We will take the balance. Here I have taken the balance. So out of total of seven lakh five thousand, first two fifty, second two fifty. Then five lakh rupees over. So seven lakh five thousand minus five lakh, two lakh five thousand. On this two lakh five thousand, twenty percent. It comes to forty one thousand. Take the total fifty three thousand five hundred. Fifty three thousand five hundred is the tax on normal income. To this we add tax on LTCG at the rate of twenty percent. So LTCG one lakh thirty three thousand into twenty percent. It comes to six twenty six six hundred. Add up both, we we'll get eighty thousand one hundred is the total tax, basic tax. <coughs> to that basic tax, we add health and education cess at the rate of four percent. So four percent three two zero four ultimately eighty three thousand three not four. So we will round it off to eighty three thousand three hundred. That's it. This is the end of problem number three. Now problem number four. See, uh, J. Prakash purchased the sculpture. On twenty fifth June two thousand one, for rupees two lakh fifty thousand, and is sold for rupees eleven lakh during the previous year. Selling expenses are ten thousand eight hundred. Calculate capital gain in the following two situations. Situation one: If it is sold to Mr. Ravi Teja of Haryana State. For second case, if it is sold to Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. So according to the provisions of Income Tax Act, paintings, drawings, sculpture. Our capital asset, and if all these paintings, drawings, sculpture are sold, then gain arises. It is a capital gain, taxable capital gain, right? That is. It. Now, in our problem, it was purchased in two thousand one. That is uh, June two thousand one. So, index number of the purchase year will be hundred. Sri Jay Prakash case one. If it is sold to Mr. Ravi Teja for the Haryana state, consideration received eleven lakh. Selling expense are ten thousand eight hundred given in the problem. Net consideration, uh, net consideration is ten lakh. Not consideration received. We will write down net consideration. Net consideration is ten lakh eighty nine thousand two hundred. From that we deduct index cost of acquisition. The asset was purchased. The sculpture was purchased for rupees. Two lakh fifty thousand. So two lakh fifty thousand into current year index three seventeen divided by index of purchase year hundred. So you get seven ninety two five hundred. Direct two lakh ninety six thousand seven hundred. This is the long term capital gain. That's it. Now case two. If it is sold to Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. Regarding this point, Income Tax Act has given the provision. If the sculpture. Painting drawings are sold to the government, to the university, or to any approved institution or national museum. Then income tax act says it is not a transfer. It is not a transfer. So gain arising on sale of these assets to government or university or national museum, it is not a sale. So gain arising is not taxable. That point you remember. So here I have written painting, drawing, sculpture, etc. are treated as capital assets, but sale to government or university or national museum is not considered as transfer. Hence, profit on sale should not be treated as uh, capital gain. That's all. So in this video, four problems I have explained. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel among your groups, among your friends, so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed. And by the super thanks which is given below my video, inshallah we'll continue the next problem.
in the next video.